Hello, I'm Chris Hernandez. This is the Weekly Report, a look at news about programs and services provided by the departments of the City of Kansas City, Missouri. The city's health department has opened a new satellite location to make services more accessible to Northland residents and businesses. The branch is located at 4420 Northeast Shoto Traffic Way. It's open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. The office provides environmental health services. This includes food service permits, food handler classes and cards, pool permits and pool operator classes, as well as temporary event permits, noise permits, lodging and child care inspections, and fee payments. For more information, call 816-513-9360. The city's Lion Creek Trail wins two honors. The Kansas City Business Journal awarded the Lion Creek Trail its prestigious 2014 Capstone Award for Infrastructure. Also, the KC Economic Development Corporation named the trail a finalist for its Public Project of the Year. The Lion Creek Trail follows Lion Creek in the Northland, providing a beautiful path for walkers and cyclists. The trail's final segment is still under construction and it will be finished this spring. When complete, the trail will extend eight miles from the Missouri River north to Missouri Highway 152. The city's convention center has also recently been recognized. For the eighth consecutive year, the convention center has received a prime site award from Facilities and Destinations magazine. The convention center was recognized for its ideal location and impressive amenities, which include more than 300,000 square feet of exhibit space on one floor, along with its state-of-the-art meeting rooms, theater, arena, and ballroom. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Heidi Downer with the Kansas City, Missouri Parks and Recreation Department. Spring is almost here and your parks and rec facilities have many activities planned to help welcome the season. For example, Starlight Theater is hosting a spring break theater camp for kids ages 6 to 14, the weeks of March 10th to 14th and March 17th to 21st. Campers will spend a week with theater professionals exploring acting, singing, and dance skills while rehearsing for a production they will perform for family and friends at the end of the week. Campers will contribute to the creation of the set, props, and costuming for the performance. They will also enjoy classic camp games and craft activities. No experience necessary. Learn more and access registration forms at kcstarlight.com. Zoological District Free Day is Tuesday, March 18th. This means that residents of Jackson and Clay Counties in Missouri will receive free zoo admission on March 18th as a thank you for their support of the zoo through the Zoological District. Visitors should be sure to bring their ID or a utility bill to show proof of residency. Learn more at the zoo's new website at kansascityzoo.org. Kick off springtime home and garden fun at the Greater Kansas City Home Show and Flower Lawn and Garden Show from March 28th through the 30th at Bartle Hall. This Kansas City tradition showcases the latest ideas, opportunities, and choices for homeowners to get a jump on spring home and garden projects. Parks and Rec is sponsoring the Flower Lawn and Garden Show, where we'll also provide stage entertainment, children's activities, and hand out information about our programs and the city's KC Green initiative. To learn more, visit kchba.org or call 816-942-8800. Now through March 31st, the Bruce R. Watkins Cultural Heritage Center will feature the March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom exhibit. This powerful photographic exhibition captures the largest demonstration in our nation's capital and civil rights history. The Bruce R. Watkins Cultural Heritage Center is open Tuesday through Saturday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Admission is free. To learn more about these or other events Kansas City, Missouri Parks and Recreation has to offer, visit kcparks.org or give us a call at 816-513-7500. The Health Department's Tobacco Use Prevention Program has resources available for those ready to quit. Some of the first steps you should take when you're thinking about quitting smoking are making a list of the reasons why you choose to quit smoking. 
Um, some of the other ideas are making a list of your triggers um, and what time of day and the occasions that you smoke. Um, this may lead to you discovering some of your barriers when you're thinking about quitting smoking. The next thing you should do is plan a quit date. Write it on the calendar, talk to your family, your coworkers, your friends about your quit date. Have them support you and encourage you in that decision. The next thing you should try or the next thing you should do is talk to your family physician if you plan on using some medications to help you with uh, withdrawal symptoms. And that could be lozenges, patches, um, gum, and some of the new medications that are out there on the market. Um, that way, if you have any underlying medical conditions or are taking other medications, this will help you discover what's right for you. Even if you're not ready to quit, please protect the health of children by not smoking around them. For more information on the Tobacco Use Prevention Program, call 816-513-6211 or visit our website www.kcmo.org slash health for tobacco cessation resources. My name is Kevin LaPointe. I'm the City Forester for the City of Kansas City, Missouri, the Parks and Recreation Department Forestry Division. And we're out here today on this uh, beautiful sunny day to talk about the Emerald Ash Borer. The Emerald Ash Borer was found in Kansas City in August of 2012, 2012. and this last year its uh, population has been growing and spreading. We first found it in Platte County, which is where we are today. This beetle is an invasive beetle that has destroyed millions of trees in the country has no natural enemies, and is spread throughout the country. We're going to try to manage this beetle to slow it down as best we can, preserve a number of our ash trees, and transition over the next 10 to 15 years by removing some ash trees, treating some ash trees to preserve them for a period of time, and most importantly that we plant new trees now of different species, because we're going to lose a number of our trees, a number of these ash trees over time. Again, the City of Kansas City, Missouri has taken some steps to help uh, the city and its citizens and the public to work through this transitional period. We've set up dump sites throughout the city. We have one in the Northland at North Cookingham in Maine, one at Doremus just south of the river, and one at Raytown in 470 uh, down in the south part of the city. At this point in time, the Emerald Ash Borer has become such a problem that the USDA and the state of Missouri have quarantined the entire state of Missouri. So that the emerald ash borer has been found in a number of places and it's spreading. So what have we done? We set up these dump sites for citizens to be able to take your material. We've treated the trees that we were able to treat. Now here's a great example here in front of me. This tree is probably about 16 or 17 inches in diameter. It is a white ash tree. The tree has been treated and we've tagged each tree that we've treated with a small round metal tag, which you'll see if you live in a residential, residential area or on the parkways, any tree that we've tr uh, treated has been tagged with this round metal tag. The other way you can tell it's been treated is down below in the main trunk of the tree, you'll see if you look closely, there's injection ports where we have drilled a small hole, put in a plug, and then with a high uh, pressure needle, and the air pressure have injected the chemical that's needed into this port. That holds the chemical in there. During the springtime is when we treat, once the trees uh, put out their leaves and they start drawing the moisture and the nutrients and things up from the root system up into the stem of the tree. So once they're foliated, we can put the injections in there and it takes the chemical up into the tree and protects that tree for the next three years. As part of our program to manage the emerald ash borer, we've talked about trees that we've treated. We also have taken trees that we couldn't treat and we've stressed them, what we call created a trap tree. The purpose of a trap tree is to help us survey and monitor both the spread and the population levels of the emerald ash borer. So what we've done through the three county area, Platte, Clay, and Jackson counties, is we've taken some of those trees that we weren't able to treat for various reasons and we've created a trap tree. 
A trap tree is a tree that we've taken some of the bark off the trunk of the tree so that the tree will send out chemical signals for the beetle and attract the beetles to it. It's found to be a way when the beetle populations are low to find out if the beetle's in the area. So we have randomly taken these trees in all three counties and stressed some of these trees to create a trap tree and attract the beetle to them. This tree that we created a trap tree is a great example. Here you can see some old damage where the amber lash borer had laid some eggs, the larvae had gone in and burrowed underneath the bark, destroying that tissue between the bark and the woody tissue, and then eventually that larvae at the end of the season turned into an adult, burrowed its way out, and left making a small D-shaped hole which you can't no longer see. But in the last few years, you can tell that the tree has tried to wall off this area of damage and it's created this callous tissue around the edge. That tells me that the beetle has been here in Platte County and in this particular tree for the, a few years because it takes a few years for the tree to create this callous tissue around it. So why, why is that important? It tells me that the beetle population in Platte County has been growing for some time and the beetle population eventually hits this exponential curve where the population explodes and hundreds of these and thousands of these ash trees begin to die at the same time. And in Platte County, you need to act now. If you want to preserve your ash trees, you need to do that now. Between now and this May, when the trees are putting out their leaves and they begin to draw the nutrients up, those trees need to be treated. Otherwise, they will more than likely be lost even this summer to the emerald ash borer. The city has relaunched its KC Momentum virtual town hall website to seek public input on the city's budget. KC Momentum is a convenient and efficient way to hear from residents who have good ideas but may not have the time or ability to attend a traditional in-person public budget hearing. To join the budget conversation, sign up at kcmomentum.org. KC Momentum complements two other options the city provides to get public input on the budget. On February 12th, city leadership held an interactive budget chat online during which residents asked questions about the budget and city leaders provided an immediate response, often via Twitter. The city's finance and audit committee is also hosting in-person public budget hearings. The remaining hearings will take place Saturday, February 22nd from 10 a.m. to noon at the Robert Mohart Multipurpose Center Auditorium. Also on Saturday, March 1st from 10 a.m. to noon at the KCPD South Patrol Division Auditorium. The proposed fiscal year 2014-15 budget is available for the public's review on the city's open data catalog at data.kcmo.org. Once again, it is tax season and Kansas City business owners must submit all business license renewals and payments to the city by February 28th to receive their 2014 business license. In addition, the employer's annual reconciliation of earnings tax withheld and all W-2 forms are also due February 28th. Taxpayers may choose to file their taxes electronically using the city's QuickTax online portal or they may download and print paper tax forms. Both the Quick Tax Portal and all tax forms and instructions are available online at kcmo.gov slash tax. Questions may be directed to the Revenue Division at 816-513-1120. For more information about any of today's stories, please log on to kcmo.gov slash weekly report. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.